So, okay, here we are. Lesson Algebraic 24, or Lesson 24, Algebraic Solutions to Simultaneous Linear Equations. All year long, we have been pointing to this place in the far distance that we would be completing the course, that you would be getting credit, and that you were one step closer to the future that you want to have. Well, just like this breaking wave points to that lighthouse, this lesson points to that solution. We only have two more um, lessons left to go this year. This one is about simultaneous solutions using equations, using algebra. Um, yesterday was about all about um, graphically solving. So what are we looking at? We're looking at an agenda that features reflections and revelations about how we did on the last test. Unfortunately, that is going to have to be saved potentially for a video, depending on how we do on that test. If there are any questions that are frequently wrong, I will go back and I will um, address those questions. If there's no questions that are that shows a common misunderstanding, then we won't have anything to review from that respect. And that would be a great thing. Um, we're going to review a little bit of brief algebra skills right away in just a minute or two. We're going to review finding some graphic solutions to linear systems, the work we did yesterday. And then we're going to teach new stuff using elimination and substitution to solve algebraically. So that's what we got going on for the rest of the day. Let's continue. Our first video will focus on, at the beginning at least, review material. So let's get started. Do stop and start. Go ahead. Okay, so I take a look at these first two questions about factoring, and I notice right away that the lead coefficient is not 1. If it's 1, I would use the AM technique, or I would use the graphing calculator with y1 is the last number in parentheses divided by x, and then y2 is whatever it says in y1 plus x. Okay, so I could do that if it was just 1h squared and 1x squared, but it's not, it's 2. So plan A is always to look for a greatest common factor. And in number 12, I find that greatest common factor. It is 2. So first things first, let's factor out the 2. And then I look and see, can I factor this remaining trinomial, this h squared minus 3h minus 40? And the answer to that is absolutely. I need two numbers that multiply out to negative 40, add up to negative 3, or on the calculator, y1 is negative 40 divided by x, y2, make sure that's in parentheses. It can also be in part 1, and I recommend it, or y1. And then you do negative 40 divided by x in parentheses plus x, and in the last column, you look for a negative 3. If you do that, you'll find the two previous columns say negative 8 and positive 5. So there are the solutions. 2, h minus 8, h plus 5. Okay. For number 13, 4x squared plus x minus 3, I look for that common factor like the 2 was in number 12, and it's simply not there. I can't find it. So rather than plan A, we have to go to plan B. And plan B is a technique where we take the 4 and we multiply it by the last term. That gives me x squared plus x minus 12. Then I have to factor that as per normal with AM or the calculator, just like we discussed a minute ago. And the two numbers that multiply out to negative 12 and add up to positive 1 are positive 4 and negative 3. But since I multiplied by the 4, the 3 by the 4, that lead coefficient here to get the 12, I got to divide back in by that 4. And when I do that, I get x plus 1, and then treating it like elementary school fractions, 4x minus 3. Okay. And if you didn't do the duck call problem or the rectangular garden problem in number one, then do so now. And if you did do it, then here's your answer. Anytime we have a problem that involves geometry, we always like to draw the figure. So there's my figure. And it's a rectangular garden, and we know that the length is four less than twice the width. So W is my width. And less than, last shall be first, first shall be last. Uh, length is 2w minus 4. Farmer Robertson, locally famous for making duck calls, wants to surround the garden with fencing. He's got to keep those rodents out, those destructive rodents. If he needs 82 feet of fencing, find the dimensions of the garden. Well, if I take the left side plus the top and the right side and the bottom, 
I get 82. This is just screaming at me to do a same side, same operation situation. And that gives me a total of six W's and negative four and negative four make negative eight is 82. Adding eight to both sides, I get six W's 90. Dividing by six, W is 15. Um, the directions say to find the dimensions of the garden. Oh, what are they looking for? So I'm not quite done yet. The length is gonna be two times 15 minus four, which is 26. So I am now complete with width and length, okay? Two more review questions. One, a fractional equation. One, a slope problem. Go ahead, do your stop and start. These two questions, I'll go over the correct answers with you in just a minute. Okay, so the slope formula is the y from the second point minus the y from the first over the x from the second minus the x from the first. And all that does is keep the order the same. So I'm going to start with the negative 4 and subtract negative 3. So that means I have to start with the 1 and subtract 3. Negative 4 minus negative 3 is negative 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. That reduces to a half. So slope in the first case is 1 half or up 1 over 2. You could always plot the points and count the slope up, up there and then reduce the fraction. But that takes a lot of, a lot of time. Not necessarily hard work, but it does take a lot of time. This one is a fraction, and you know there are two ways you can go here. One way is that you can say, hey, this is a same side, same operation situation, and you can do 3 eighths plus 2 fifths. Now, a lot of students are very uncomfortable with fractions. Truth be known, you can use your graphing calculator using alpha y equals to do 3 eighths plus another alpha y equals 2 fifths. And if you did that, let's see, you get 15, 16, I think you get 31 fortieths n. But... A more powerful technique that we use that works better because it can also work with binomials and factors and everything else is to multiply everything in that equation by the least common denominator and some people will look at the least common denominator and they'll say oh what's the least common denominator of eight and five man that's really easy that's 40 and some people will go oh god i hate fractions oh man do i hate fractions if you're a, a fraction hater I guess that's a hater that you're allowed to be in this politically correct world. Um, the 8 and the 5, you can always just multiply the denominators. And if you do that, you might not get the least common denominator, but you will always get a common denominator. And in the case of equations, if you just do every step right after that, you'll still arrive at the correct answer. So we know the least common denominator is 40, so I'm going to multiply every single term by 40. Okay, 40 times 3 eighths is 15n. 40 times 2 fifths is 16, and of course the n. Minus 120 equals 280. So 31n minus 120 is 280. Adding 120 to both sides, I get 31n is 400. Dividing by 31, and I get 400 over 31. Is that an, a clean looking type of question? No. But a lot of times, these fractional equations are not clean in the end. So it is a correct solution to this question. All right. So we've done some algebra review, the kinds of things we can expect to see on our final exam. Now, let's talk about some graphing review. We'll do stop and start again. You're going to graph these two equations simultaneously and find the solution set. Go ahead. Okay, so with the first line, y equals 3x minus 1, y equals mx plus b is the typical equation of a line, so mx, so that means the slope is 3. The y-intercept is negative 1. For the second line, the slope is negative 2, the y-intercept is negative 6. Let's graph the red one. I begin, that's why we have the b there, at negative 1, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. <coughs> I did a little out of order there. Up 3 over 1, connect the dot. There's my red line, which is a picture of every single coordinate pair that satisfies or checks in the equation y equals 3x minus 1. If it is not on that line, it does not check. Simple as that. Okay, um, y equals negative 2x minus 6. The b for begin for y-intercept means we begin at negative 6 on the y-axis. The slope is negative 2, so I can go down 2 
over one to the right down to over one but I chose to go up to and then one left it's the same exact line same thing up to one left and then I do connect the dot and it looks to me like they meet at the point negative one four uh, negative one negative four sorry um, but let's double check and make sure that I'm correct because it actually looks like you're a tiny little bit off of that point and that could just be the way we drew the line so the check will tell us if we're right here's my check y equals 3x minus 1 I plug in a negative 1 for x and negative 4 for y and yeah I do the calculations it works and y equals negative 2x minus 6 I plug in a negative 1 for x and a negative 4 for y come up with the same thing negative 4 equals negative 4 so lights flash bells ring we have the question correct and you know the, the the slide view that I have allows me to peek one slide ahead and apparently I started with this one of these lines already on the axis on the next graph so I apologize about that but this is the line or the equation that we need you to graph or the two equations solve it simultaneously and check it doesn't say it but please do and um, you got to little bit of a preview on one of your lines right there okay gotta get started we'll do stop and start and I'll check it out okay for the red line first thing I have to do is make it say y equals so I add x to both sides and that gives me y equals x plus 2 therefore the slope is 1 the number in front of the x the y-intercept is 2 the number at the end for y equals negative x plus 8 the slope is negative 1 the y-intercept is 8 so since we already have the blue line up there well let's see what's the next point that it puts in ah, it puts the red point in okay so we begin where x is equal to 2 or the y I'm sorry the y-intercept is 2 so we begin where y is 2 and I go up 1 over 1 up 1 over 1 up 1 over 1 and I connect the dot as far as the blue line goes I begin at 8 and I go down 1 over 1 so it looks like we got our intersection point there looks like that intersection point is 3 5 let's confirm with the check plugging in a 3 to the first equation negative 3 plus 5 is 2 negative 3 yeah we're looking good 2 is 2 that works and in the second or blue equation y equals negative x plus 8 okay 5 is negative 3 plus 8 yeah that works 5 is 5 so I have it correct so there's a review of some algebra that we need to know graphing uh, systems of lines that we need to know systems of equations solving graphically so we are done with the review section of our agenda for today and now we will go forward into the meat of our lesson